So many critics, these pundits. Generally speaking, I'd be a fan of off the ball. Exactly. And like Tommy knows his football, obviously, listening to football pod the odd time. And when I was looking at the power rankings and I thought that Jesus Owen must still be feeling the effects of these mushrooms. But they just dismiss you like, you, you know, you have nothing to do with the bloody occasion. Tommy, good morning to you. Morning, lads. It's the Mead Power Hour. That's what we're doing. Well, listen. 98 days it took us to win a match but it's good to be back there you go there you go it uh, won't take much to get the, the juices flowing again in me I'll tell you that much no no and that's that's the whole point of the, the summer I think in fairness Andy McEntee had always talked about how you know you go out of the uh, Leinster Championship and then you go out of the qualifiers and your season's over mm-hmm. you don't even get the chance to train on and that's yep. when you start to see you know the, the in racing parlance the two year olds the progressive two year olds yeah. come through um, so some me teams Go on. Me had a very, me had a couple of very frustrating summers around um, 16, 17, where they'd lose to Dublin and then lose by a point to Donegal and Tyrone in the qualifiers in the first or second round. And that's your year over and there's no chance of making progress. So um, hopefully, and Colin spoke about it there, some of the young players that are getting their opportunity this year. It is a very young team. There's a lot of excitement in Mead around some of the young lads. And, uh, do you know, Conor Gray made his debut at the weekend, still under 20. He's a monster of a lad in midfield. Kicked a great point. Jack Flynn as well has played a couple of games. Sean Coffey was probably Mead's finest performer at wing back. He's come in under the radar. So Aaron Lynch as well got 1-3 in his debut. The Talchon Cup, I had said it a couple of weeks ago, it's going to be a good thing for me to win a couple of games and, you know, these players to get a bit of confidence because um, there are very good footballers there. OK, we did. We do have to talk about, are there two power rankings now... <laughs> given that there are two separate competitions. You you said at the start of the year, the power rankings, they'll sort themselves out as the summer goes on. Yeah, well, look, we leave this up for discussion and debate. I tried to I tried to separate them into two, but I couldn't because I feel like some teams are in the All-Ireland series but aren't in the top 16 in the country. But if there's a, a public um, push to separate them into two, we can do that. I don't think we should. Maybe we should. Will I get through slide four quickly? Go for it. Okay, so we've... Uh, Good few movement here, right? So Tipperary are down to 31st after losing to Mead at the weekend. Tip and London are the only two teams in the country who haven't won that yet this year. New York have slid back four places. They were bombed into 26th place. They've gone back to 30th. The teams around them are going to play another two games before they play again. Um, Wexford have moved up. They're quietly having a good year. Uh, they got close to Leash and Leinster. They got a great draw against Fermanagh at the weekend. Carlo had the win at the Talchon Cup this weekend in round one. They turned over Wicklow, kicked six of the last... Uh, five scores to win by a point. They overturned an eight-point defeat that they had suffered in Leinster three weeks beforehand. Leitrim, probably lucky not to slide, but the teams around them have all moved up. Uh, they're in 27th. They were close to Antrim in the first half last week. Antrim pulled away. Andy McIntyre's Antrim are having a good year this year. They were very unlucky in the league. They won by nine points. Longford, 26th. They didn't win, but they're unlucky against a good Limerick team and they lost by a point in the Talchon Cup. I think it's coming for Paddy Christie's side. Moving on to the next slide, and the only change here is Fermanagh sliding back and Sligo moving forward. Um, Sligo are into 20th place, Fermanagh in 21st. The Sligo in the 20s run, by God, has been unbelievable. But none of the players are in Tony McEntee's team. None of them have played yet for Tony McEntee's side. So there is a lot of room for growth in the Sligo team. Um, he came in for a little bit of criticism for his setup against Galway. He didn't start Patrick O'Connor, who's one of the you know most informed forwards in the, the especially Division 4 and, and the early rounds of Connacht. So maybe we'll see the real Sligo over the next couple of weeks and maybe they can pick up a win and get into the preliminary rounds. But they're the lowest ranked team in these power rankings in the All-Ireland series. Uh, Offaly, Mead and Cavan got the job done this weekend. Same as down. None of them have moved. Um... So that is where they're at. Moving on to our next slide, slide three, and the only change here is that Kildare have moved forward. Sorry, da- down are in this, right? Even though they're in the top. Down are fifteenth. They're the only ones in the country. D- yeah. Down are the only team who are in the top sixteen who are in the Talton Cup, and so therefore you expect Down to win the Talton Cup. I have Down as favourites in the Talton Cup. Okay. I do. And if they yeah, uh, if they do that, you can say they are better than Westmeath. Perhaps if Westmeath lose all their games, or well, well let's wait and see. But, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think we're going to see that over the round robin. Do you know, we're going to see that uh, there's probably, do you know, we're, we're so many matches now to eliminate four teams. We'll see if every team gets a win. I'm not sure they will. So um, there's going to be no dead rubbers, which is the only good thing, but it's a lot of games to eliminate four teams. Um, Kildare, they're moving forward by virtue of their Dublin performance as much as that under 20 success. It'll be very interesting to see how many of Brian Flanagan's team get 
called in or even get a start immediately. We saw Conor Gray get a start for Meath straight away. Shane Farrell potentially is the is the one. Uh, physically, he looks like he's got it. He's got all the football in the world and he's really impressed under 20 level under the last three years. Kallair, like two All-Ireland under 20 successes in five years, is so positive. I beat the got a great last year. Yeah. Yeah, and finalists actually got a great tune out of the, the, the team with Jimmy Hyland and Paddy Woodgate and Aaron O'Neill have come through in that team and a couple of other lads, Archibald as well. Let's see what they get out of this team. Like the footballers are wrinkled there. It felt like it was something off the field or mentally that was wrong with them earlier in the year. They were just being easy to bet, easy to beat, but they turned it around. They really did turn it around and they've proven that they're Dublin find it hard to beat them. Whatever they're doing defensively, the dubs are struggling. Maybe the, the dubs are a little bit off colour that day, but Kildare deserve credit well, and I think Kildare are going in under a radar now. Well, you say, you say they find them hard to beat them. Three out of four times they find them hard to beat them. The other time they scored yeah, five goals. Both by a point. Yeah, true, Ger. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but um, some, they've cracked something. They've uh, cracked something. On the 20s thing, setup. Sorry, Tommy, to interrupt you. On, mm. the, on the 20s thing, like we, Tony McEntee on the show last week and he was basically saying off the Sligo under 20s players, he was going to essentially leave them off, let them enjoy the time after the championship and probably, probably not call them up to the senior panel. Um, yeah. Curious to see whether Kildare follow a similar pattern because it'd be great to get them into the senior setup. Well, I think because they're not under 21s, that extra year makes such a big difference. There's not that many of last year's beaten finalists in from the under 20 mm. squad who've made it through just yet. They're just they're they're holding them back and trying to create depth. I think is is yeah. the long term. You know, they're not thinking just short term, trying to win something this year. But I, I think I think when you look at it now, it is like. The Meads defeat to Offaly, which we won't get too big into, but like Mead were turned over six times in the tackle against Offaly in the first half that day. They were a, a young team, a light team, and Offaly were wily, they were smart. We've seen how Offaly have, have done so well in the last couple of weeks as well. Like the two lads that have done well for me that have come in, especially are Connor Gray and Jack Flynn, and they're monsters. They're huge men in and around the middle. They're only 20 and 21, but they are absolutely massive and physically they can compete. I think that is just one of the big things. You know, Sligo have uh, some superb footballers there, but I, I think McEntee, I can understand that reluctance. They, was, they want to get a bit more into the bodies. Yeah. It's such a physical game at the minute. It's interesting listening to uh, Paddy Andrews talking to you a couple of weeks ago. It might have been a couple of weeks ago. It might have been last week. He was saying that, you know, players don't really burst through on the scene anymore. And um, my initial one was, oh, what about Con? And then mm. he, as if he was listening to me, he was like, Con was around with us for a couple of years before he actually, so yeah. he was he was doing the training. And I think pa um, John Small was fairly similar. Like, Training and training and training for years, and then burst out of nowhere. We think, but actually, he's been with the team for two, three seasons. I I played freshers football in DCU with a very talented team. I was say number twenty four in a panel of twenty six, and uh, John Small was our captain that year alongside Tom Flynn, who was the under twenty one player of the year. And I just remember Smalley disappearing around December, and we just we never saw him. <laughs> Next thing, comes back again towards the end of January, and we'd heard that he'd been in uh, with the Dubs over that winter and um, at the time it would have been Gavin's first year it would have been no it would have been Gilroy's it would have been Gilroy's first year I think so yeah it would have been uh, doing a lot of work quietly in the background um, building uh, them up getting yeah. them ready and like John Small didn't become a regular until Gavin's first year um, and then really settled into who he is in around 2016 so like like John Fogarty is a great piece in the boys in 93 and those lads that all came together like it's a freak that Dublin have McCaffrey Mannion Kilkenny, um, Fenton, and I've managed to forget somebody there. Small. small, like all from the same age group, but it took them all different times to settle. Like Fenton didn't play minor. Uh, Mannion had uh, and McCaffrey were freaks. They had the speed. Kilkenny was just an awesome player at that age, and Fenton obviously just grew into himself as the years went on. And like they, they've never been beaten together when they've been on the field together. So not every generation of footballer can come through at the same time at the same speed. Like David Clifford, when he, we spoke to him a couple of weeks ago in the football pod. Okay, he was very interesting. He spoke about learning about decision making. He can't be four from eight. He needs to be seven from eight when he's shooting. But the physicality was the big thing as well for him to come in. And David Clifford is a, a big man. He was, yeah, know. he was. I mean, if, if, if he's saying that, like a lot of yeah. a lot of these other kids coming through, you know, they will. It will be twenty three, twenty four before they uh, are ready to make it. So anyway, Westmead sixteen down, fifteen, Cork down yeah. one to fourteen. Calera 13th, Louder 12th and Calera 11th. These two haven't moved in a long time. They were both beaten well in their provincial finals. They both scored 15 points. They, they illustrated some of the positives that they've shown 
uh, that their teams have over the last couple of years. But obviously the, the gulf in class between the very best in the game at the minute and those teams are just so evident. But Clare and Loud are two teams that are maximising what they have at the moment. Donegal and Tent, they haven't moved. Like Clare and Donegal are going into this game and Ennis at the weekend. Genuinely, I said it on the pod this week and the lads thought I was, I was you know, uh, trying to be cute. Donegal have a free shot this weekend. Donegal are coming into this game. Nobody's giving them a hope in hell. No. All you need is one win to get through in the round robin. And it is a vital game for both Clare and Donegal. It's in Ennis, which gives the, you know, a, a huge um, positive for Clare. But like, this game is going to be so, so tight at the weekend. And likewise, it's like with Clare. That game on Sunday, neither game is going to get much um, credence over the next couple of days. We're going to be talking about Kerry Mayo and Galway Tyrone, but the both of those games are going to be very close. They're actually the biggest games of the weekend. Yeah, I think they could be. They're the ones yeah. with the jeopardy in it. Like, yeah. um, okay, uh, my my prediction, my homer prediction is that Kildare are going to finish top of this uh, page by the end of the season. That Donegal Ooh. will be down to like down below down in Westmeath. That they'll be fifteenth okay. or sixteenth. That's my Shame, wild what prediction. Reckon? Well, Monaghan are sitting there in a group with with the two teams behind them on your power rankings, Tommy, Donegal, Clare, and you've got yeah, Derry as well. Who, who would you expect uh, between those two beating finalists of the weekend, Louth and Clare, just like to have a chance of progressing? Louth are in a group with Kerry, Mayo, Cork, mm. and as I say, Clare in that group with Donegal, the mini Ulster, uh, Donegal, Monaghan, d- and Derry. Yeah, I think I think Louth's group is tougher. Um, but like again it comes down to that Cork game all you need is one win to get through to a preliminary mm. quarter final and then you have a chance to get into a quarter final and that is where these teams want to get to Clare are in a mini Ulster as you said I think they're going to relish it but it's again those games are going to be so tight but the like preliminary quarter finals the team who finishes second in their divisions are going to have home advantage against the teams mm-hmm. who finished third in other divisions that's a huge yeah. advantage it is a big advantage, but like so much can happen in these groups. Like a draw, a win is going to like swing the balance so much. Look, at, I it's, understand it's that, the it's argument. Not, it's not that big a deal. Like you know, Castle Bar isn't amazing always. Uh, like but having a home match in order to get to an All Ireland quarter final, that's a pretty big carrot. I, I think that these teams are so evenly balanced that um, look, home advantage is obviously worth a couple of points. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's the end of your season if you finish third. You could easily flip it against a team, you know. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on because we've got to get to the. Ch- bit. Go on. Shane's point, in fairness, if the top four go through as the top four, as we'd expect, the four provincial winners, Shane's point about the next date being so close to each other is very true. They are all so close to each other. Mm. Some are in good form, some aren't, but they are very close to each other in terms of the quality on paper. Okay, top eight. There's been a couple of movements here. Roscommon have slid back to eight. Um, Tyrone have slid back to seventh. Armagh despite losing again have moved forward to sixth I'm going to be accused of an Armagh bias here but they got so much right at the weekend so much right and they're going to be kicking themselves and we, you know I, I mentioned Kieran McGinney sliding doors moments and Jerry, you'll be well aware of them as Clare boss like so close and so many occasions to so many big days and likewise again a penalty shootout killing them like extra time they had it normal time they even could have snuck it it looked like they had time to run to perfection Mayo stood back to fifth Derry like what a performance. Like, in fairness, like, Shea McGuigan is the man. Glanner Glass said it after the weekend. Shea McGuigan, in my opinion, is the person who pulled Derry over the line at the weekend. And we questioned at the start of the year, did Derry have enough? Had they done enough to progress from the team that we saw last year? Well, McGuigan has brought his game on tenfold. Brendan Rodgers' movement into midfield has made a massive difference. Owen McAvoy's emergence as one of the best defenders in the game at the minute. Mm. Like the job that he did on Mernon and Turbot swapping with Chrissy McKay throughout that game. And even like Lachlan Murray who we were looking at not getting a chance to the under 20s because of that rule at the minute. He comes in and he scores a clutch point with a minute to go. He does his job and finishes it off. So look, I think Derry deserved to be in fourth place. Um, winning back-to-back ulcers is, is an incredible feat. So they're there. The Dubs Jer, they haven't moved. They're still in third place. Still behind Galway. Galway in second and Kerry are in first. And I am putting it on the record right now. Galway are my favourites this year for the All Ireland. <sighs> Jesus, Tommy. Where did that come from? Yeah, I just, I just really like what I'm seeing from Galway. Well, hang on. This is your power rankings. You then need to make them number one. You need to have the courage to screw no, your conviction the, the, to the wall. They're your favourites. Okay, maybe I maybe I framed that wrong. I think Galway are in the best position. Like being in first place in June when there's six, seven games to go isn't necessarily the best place to be. I just think what Galway have shown this year, and I understand what you're saying about Dublin, and I think you've made a compelling case. 
And I think you could look like the smartest man in the country come the start of August. But I hadn't even added Cluxton back into the team. I, mean, I know they hadn't. <laughs> and we we got there were some scary signs at the weekend, but there was also some signs that they're not. No, it's fair point. They're a different Dublin. They're a different Dublin than the Dubs we saw winning five in a row. So they're a very different team. Is it? But a go away for me. I've just. They've just grown and they've come on leaps and bounds from last year. Is it the strength and depth, Tommy, with Galway? Because you have to, you can't win in All Ireland without strength and depth, and maybe that was what was missing last year. It's it's the the conviction I'm seeing with them. It's the like I mentioned some of the improvements Derry have made last year. Like like Matty Tierney needs to show it again, right? Mm-hmm. And we need to see it from Matty Tierney. Everyone will talk about Shane Walsh needing to you know double down and show us what he has consistently. We, we haven't seen them click altogether yet. And I just think we're starting to see glimpses of Ian Burke. And, you know, his performance against Roscommon was awesome. He kicked points the last day, showed he could do that. Um, Conroy was, was obviously missing the last day. I just think if we get this full go-away team together, I just think that they have options now off the bench that are, are making an impact. And I just think that they're going to give us a little bit more. Um, well, let's see what Kerry Mayo is like this weekend. But um, I, just, I just have a feeling about go-away this year. I just did. One of the one of the things when you were talking about Derry there, Oren Lynch's cockiness and performance in general was brilliant. Is that one one thing that could be a negative in, in terms of Galway? Like I don't know, did they know between Conor Gleeson and Bernard Power who their who their number one is? Obviously Gleeson was in the last day, but can that be a if you've question marks over any one of your starting fifteen, that can be an issue. Yeah, well, J- James and Paddy would feel quite strongly about it that you, you should have a championship goalkeeper and keep it at that. Um, I can kind of understand where Galway are coming from. Bernard Power and Conor Gleeson are very different keepers. You know, uh, different. it's not as it's not as big a contrast as Clark and Henley were, um, but it's it's probably not far off it as well. And um, I can kind of understand why a manager would do that. Do you know, like kickouts are obviously so important, but it can be horses for courses in different games as well. Now the lads fundamentally disagree with me on that, but I, I can kind of see where Galway are coming out on it. It can be a weakness shame for sure, but like look at Rafferty, like Rafferty makes a blunder for the Brendan Rodgers goal mm. but Rafferty is also the man who punches the holes who kicks two inspirational points who lays on minimum another three or four scores well, with so his bravery kicks them wides you know it's a obviously he does Jared, it's a mixed like, bag you know like it, I, it is it is but I just think he's bringing enough to justify it I do I think look I don't know I'm, I'm definitely I'm on the fence about it a little bit because the wides suck the spirit of the crowd. You were about to say they, momentum, weren't you? They break up the back of the team. Like, they just, all the energy. They're real energy stoppers. And I'm just, Hollywood balls, they're great when they go over. And it's like, yeah, but like, what about the other two? To, okay. to, to Clifford's point, right? Seven out of eight, yeah. Like, it's not seven out of eight, it's 50 50. Okay, well, to take the points aside. His passing, his breaking the line. Excellent. And like, Excellent. Yeah, but, but that is so important. When you look at it, at, at an attack that. Only Rian O'Neill really stood up. He was shut down apart from moments. Rian O'Neill had moments. Turbot, Mernon, Duffy. Um, Maybe in a semi final, five out of yeah. six of them go over and they reach an all Ireland final and it's totally worthwhile. I, I, you know, and, so, and you have to go through this process of finding your range and improving like, your accuracy. And absolutely. they're trying something. Like, I, I, think, I think what, what McGinney is doing is, is really phenomenal. And I see this yeah. abuse that he gets on Twitter. I'm like, you're all mad. You're all just but mad. Like it's, it, it's, and it's nearly coming as much from inside Armagh and counties in, that can just eat themselves Claire alive. Claire burned them out, the fools. Yeah, what yeah. were they doing? Listen, last, last word Decade on that. Decade in like, the wilderness is their sin for their sins. Exactly. But we talk about sliding door moments. Like McGinney's sliding door moments, we mentioned them already. Lynch and Rafferty. Owen Lynch's saves in the, in the shootout yeah, really were does. unbelievable. Rafferty's kickouts in the last couple of minutes when, when Derry put the squeeze on, he was unlucky. He had the head down for one move. I don't think there was enough moving from him, but the kickouts let him down. Lynch's kickouts... He got away. He got away with some. Lynch got put over the line for a forty-five that O'Neill fuck nailed. Excuse my language. I got excited. Uh, nailed. That's and how good it was. Yeah. Bit of game. Like Goff obviously throws that ball up. How? Like I don't know whether it should have been a free or not. Like it looks like it should have been a free. That he overcarried it. That he dropped the ball. That he held two Armada defenders off in the line. How that ball didn't roll over the line. Like you would put. Yeah your house and your holiday home abroad on Rian O'Neill kicking that ball over the bar from the 45. That was a joke. So, like, the fine lines, the inches, like, that right. are in these keeper decisions. Last point on this. Colin O'Rourke said that in punditry today, that colour, wit and enthusiasm is missing. Tune into the football pod. <laughs> Paddy Anders and James, James Dunne will bring it for you. As good uh, a plug as you could get, yeah. I'm very excited about a, a bit of work that um, James O'Donoghue and Darren Conway are doing for us today. 
I'm excited too. Keep an eye on your socials for that. I haven't heard about yeah. this, right? It is it is as random and brilliant as it sounds. If if it is as random and brilliant as it sounds, it's going to be one of our all time great things coming Hopefully. to off the ball social channels near you soon. <laughs> Tommy, you came, yeah. you saw, you smeared us with your power rankings, and we are either happy or upset, depending on where you're from. Good stuff. Thanks a million. Thanks, lads. Good work today. Tommy. Bye bye.